and like it was like a it was like a dream it was like i'm here like like nobody really i probably look like an idiot bro like, you had to make like sure looking over through, like. i'm looking at my like and i was like i'm here like and then my i was like then my parents are here too like that's the moment i realized where i was like that was that was like a really cool thing for me because i never had the chance to sit and stop but seeing those guys like you know until you see the nfl nba player in person on the field you don't really understand like oh, we about to get it on like this ain't practice <laughs> yeah, for, real. for real though like i can say that like for me like i only blocked him like two plays last year but like jj watt lined up in front of me i'm like yo son this jj watt but jj watt better realize i'm will richardson out there for real like you know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's an amazing moment but it's like right. the moment you've been waiting on for your lifetime like it's like a nervousness, greatness. It's every bit of feeling in one. Like, you know, like it was amazing though. Like, <laughs> and don't let you have some success. Don't let oh, you yeah. don't let you find out that boy is human. Like, oh homie. Like, <laughs> like hold on. I, I, did I move you? For did, real, hold no. on. Like, oh. Like what? I just sat down on your the one of the hardest bull rushes all time. Like I just caught your ass. Like, what's up? Like, <laughs> for real though, that's how it is. And then you always had that moment too where you're like, ooh, like I just got posterized, or ooh, I just got bull rush and put on my back. Like <laughs> me, I know you got a moment. I need to hear that moment, bro. Like posterization. Who did it to you? I wanna say I've been dunked on by Shaq, by Amari, but like the you might like my young moment. When I realized I didn't get dunked on, but what had happened was I had a good game against Atlanta the first time. No, the Nets. We played the Nets. And he just they just threw me in the game at the end. We're down like 17 points in five minutes. We fool around and get back in the game. Me and Adam Morrison, people don't realize Adam Morrison was cold, bro. Oh no. <laughs> Adam Morrison can pass. So we start he come off some he comes off a pin down, shot fakes, drops it. I get a dunk. I get a rebound. I tip it out to him. He had a three, like. We're just hooping, but I'm so active. I'm so turned. <laughs> and like, who is this dude? And the very next day, we have a back-to-back. We play Atlanta, and, like, my legs are noodles. You know, playing in the game hard is different than playing in practice hard. Like, I'm just tired. And I remember Marvin Williams. I'm thinking Marvin Williams, he's like 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he a regular guy or whatever. And I remember Marvin Williams set a screen, and he slipped. And, like, in the NBA, there's so much spacing. And, like, in college, I'm kind of just sitting there watching. They dropped it to Marvin Williams. Marvin Williams catches the ball, cocks that thing back, like, like, doo-doo, doo-doo, like, doo-doo, and boom, dunks. <laughs> and I'm still looking over because, you know, like, a college guard dribbles. He's, like, at the free throw line, bro. College yeah. guard dribbles and tries to come up, and I'm going to go put that on the glass. Like, Marvin caught that thing. Next thing I know, he was in the air cocking back. Boom, and Marvin was like, I think, I want to say second pick in the draft mm-hmm. coming out. <laughs> and kind of think, boom, bang that. I'm looking at Marvin. I'm like, I was like, dang, this is the NBA. I was like, dang, that happened fast. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there looking on the weak side. Boom, he's in the air dunking. I'm looking like this. Like, yo, what the heck just happened? So yo, that was the moment I was like, now all these guys are fast. Like, wow, like, Good. they can all <laughs> jump out and, and dunk. Like, For real. You know, I'm thinking here, like a guard or a wing, you know. So you and Adam, I know posterization, but in your mind, you was like, I got to be careful with anybody in the league. Like, I start realizing, like, now you got to be earlier. Like, you know, in college, you could just sit there, but I'm like, nah, it's real spacing. Yeah. So the league is about can you play in space? Can you cover ground? Mm-hmm. Like, I realized not just being tall, you got to be anticip- anticipating what's going to happen and then getting there. But it was like, a, like, nah, this is really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so you and Adam were playing in Charlotte together, right? Mm hmm. Okay, yeah, because you know that we're from North Carolina. Both of us are from North Carolina, so. Oh, it's not we, right. Uh, I know that. Mhm, mhm. Yep. And you, uh, you played with KG too, bro. Give us a Kevin Garnett story, bro. One of my like true heart to heart, like one of my favorite players in the NBA, just because of how much he loved what he did. Just, just give us, a, just tell us a little bit about Kevin Garnett. How many do you want? <laughs> how many stories do you just, want? Just give, all right, just give us two. All right, give me about how Kevin KG is as a person, and then give me that KG that don't nobody want to fuck with, like. That's what I needed. All right, so we had a big playoff game against the Hawks. And during our run that year, and on the media, we're seeing all the analysts. We're seeing every show. 
and they're like, KG's washed up. It's his 17th year. He don't got it no more. He's not the same. You know, the Hawks kind of beat the stuffing out of us two games and none at their house. So they, they took care of home, but they looking at KG like he, he don't got it no more. We get to the garden. KG goes off and he scores, you know, like 30 sudden points, you know, 15 rebounds. He's unguardable. He's sitting the shimmies, the fadeaways. He's talking to the crowd. He's blocking shots. He, had he run, <laughs> runs the movie. floor. On the movie. Bro, runs, <laughs> hey, runs the floor. Rondo throws him a lob. He kills, right? And I knew KG was intense, but I didn't really un- – I didn't, I didn't understand, like, nah, nah, like, for real, for real intense. Me and Greg Steesman, we kind of walk into the locker room a little later, right? KG's in the locker room after the game. And when we walk in, KG's in there standing in, in the locker room. Ain't no – like, no one's saying nothing to him. And we just walk in and we catch it. We're like, oh, snap. And he's just walking around and he's flexing. Nobody's in there. And – the the hairs on his arm are sticking up. He's got goosebumps. He's so turnt. He's like got goosebumps. And me and Steve are like, oh snap! Like yo, like look at his arm. Like, and I remember watching. Like, no, like this is really intense, bro. Like he's still turnt from the game. <laughs> oh, the game is over. <laughs> game is over, bro. He's still turnt. I walk. Look. And then, like, with KG, I want to know everything. Like, I, KG's on my wall growing up. He knows I want to be KG. Like, I want to know everything. So, like, I'm an emotional player, Will. So, you know, I may have – if I'm turned, if I'm on, I'm killing. But, like, the next game, it's like, oh, there's a low. Emotionally, it's hard to stay there. Like, you know, I would get so energized into it. And, like, you can't just emotion yourself in the games. So I asked KG. I was like, KG – how are you always so turnt all the time? How are you so emotional? Like, how does that work? Like, you don't come off a high. I was like, you're always up there. He said, younger. No, I'm not. But I said, nah, KG. I said, remember before the game when you beat your head against the thing and then you scream to the crowd and you do that? You're always, you're always like turnt and then you come out and you're all fired up. He said, nah, younger. Take the time and really watch what I do, Joe. He used to call everybody Joe. That's a Chicago thing. Hey, Joe, like, watch what I do. He said, when I walk to the stanchion before I hit my head or, or do that, do, do the deal, I'm talking to myself. I'm praying. I'm thinking about what I have to do. So I started watching a little closer. I looked at KG. He was just sitting there meditating. He said, watch me during timeouts. He said, Doc is talking, whatever's happening. And I'm sitting there, you know, I'm sitting there meditating and visualizing what I have to do next. So I start watching KG on the bench. So I start watching him. He's over there like this, eyes closed in the middle of the game. Kevin, we got this play. We're running, you know, turn five. Cool. And the next thing, he's just sitting there visualizing. And then when they call the timeouts, he'll be the last one out going to the court. But he, he's just visualized and watched. Hey, he, he, he visualized the play. When I set the screen here, I'm pick and pop. After I pick and pop, I'm going to take this shot. I'm going to make it. Then I'm going to run down court and I'm going to pick this guy up. And he said he's going through – a mental game plan of everything has to do. So he's like, before I've done it, he's like, I've already done it. I already saw it before I did it. So he visualizes everything. So I was going crazy. I'm like, so you're not as crazy as you are. He's like, I'm playing mind games with you. He was like, if you soft, I'm going to try you. And then if I see that you fold, I'm going to destroy you. He said, you know, if, if, if you, after I see you ain't soft, now we're going to play chess. That, <laughs> now we're going to play chess. <laughs> Now we're going to start playing sets. Oh, you oh you like to go right? I'm going to cut your right hand off. Oh, you like the left hand? I'm coming off the left. Oh, you got both hands? Well, I'm going to try you on both sides. We're going to see. So I'm going to play the game with you. I might, I might come and try to fight you one game. I just want to see what you built like, you know? Bro, I love like, it. <laughs> he was like, cool. And then he got a game. You know, he has a game plan to get certain people. He's smaller than me. I'm jumping over him. If he's bigger, I'm going around him. Mm-hmm. But if he, let's say he athletic, he like, now we dancing. Now I got to beat him with my footwork. So he's always visualizing and thinking. Like, shoot arounds with KG, I never seen nothing like it, bro. <laughs> you know, you go to shoot around and dudes kind of like space out or they fall asleep or they like, oh, where I'm supposed to be? I'm here. All right, boom, boom, boom. You just go through it. He's going through that thing like he's in the game, bro. 
<laughs> we will run the play. He gets the play, throw it into me. <laughs> Fade away. Nobody <laughs> on <him>. working. <laughs> so he's going game. I've never gone game speed and shoot around, bro. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's going game around. speed. He's screaming out coverages like we in the real game. Yeah. Ice, ice, down, down, down. Get through. Hey, get. We just walking through. So I'm sitting there, I'm looking, I'm like, I'm learning like, dang, maybe I need to take, I need to take shoot around more serious. Sure. I need to take these things more serious. So I feel like I played five, six, five, five, five or so more se- years because of Kevin Garnett taught me how to prepare, how to plan, how to take things serious. Like no messing around on game days. Like we come in, we come into work. So practice was like, he, it, he made it. We were practicing to get better for us because we didn't like the dudes on the other team. We didn't practice because coach is making us go through this. And we're doing, we weren't just doing a drill. We were doing something to stop the dude on the other side. Mm-hmm. We wanted the fade with Bron. We wanted the fade with D-Wade. We wanted the fade with Chris Bosh. Like, we had real problems with these boys. Like, yo, we come off this thing, you're going to trap him on the sidelines. Like, I had my life in my hands. I, I was trapping him with my life on the line. I wasn't trapping him just to kind of jump out and do the play for coach and look good in the game to get more minutes. I was trapping him with my life on the line like I can't let this guy turn the corner. You know what I'm saying? So KG, mm-hmm. it's dude he like put that, that battery in back, boy. That's sure, it's bro. different. And I'm pretty sure, like, you ask anybody about KG, they all gonna give you KG, KG. Like, you know what I'm saying? He just one of those dudes where he don't change for nobody, you know? Like, and I always respected that. Like, always been a huge, huge Tim Duncan fan. Always been a huge, huge KG fan. But for there always been for two separate uh, KG fan. But they've always been for two separate reasons. You know, you look at Tim Duncan, you don't see close to what you see with KG. But if you take what, what Tim Duncan does, you take what KG does, and you put them into your game, Oh. Now you're doing something, and that's what I used to try to do. Like, and remind you, I still can dribble too, so I might even got them beat a little bit on that. But like, that's how I used to think about stuff, bro. Like, I used to try to take people's game and try to try to put it into mine. Like, you know, so a KG's heart, his soul, and his love for the game, you can see it more than any yeah. more than anybody in the court. You would never step on the court with KG and be able to say that you play with more intensity than him ever. He told me, <laughs> "I'm gonna give you some game." He said, hey, Joe, look at this. He said, you could beat half the dudes in the league off a of hustle. Mm-hmm. He said, half the guys in the league, we're not talking skill. We're not talking game plan. We're not talking footwork. He said, you can, you're better than half the guys in the NBA just by outworking them. Yeah. Half yeah. the guys in the league, you can outwork them like I ain't got no skill. I'm just, I'm just Dennis Rodman out here. Not to say that Dennis Rodman isn't skilled, no disrespect there, but I'm just, I'm just going to rebound, right? Just, I'm going to hustle. You better than half the guys in the league. And he was like, throw in skill. Now 75%. Now mm-hmm. throw in skill and mindset and hustle. You're one of the best players in the entire league. Sure. Skill, mindset, hustle. But he said, half the dude just, I'm going to outwork you. Outwork. <laughs> like, are you, want when, you, when you see that man on the other side of you, are you competing like your life is on the line? Are you trying to take his heart? Like, are, like not just beat him. Are you trying mm-hmm. to take his heart? Yeah. Like, homie, I got to see what you built like. Now we going to dance. Fast. Like, are you trying to take his soul, bro? Fast. Like, flat out, that's what KG was on. And now we're going to talk. Now we'll have a conversation later on. Now yeah. I might respect you. Once I see you, you, you on one with me, now we'll see. And that's what, K, that's what KG was on. But for me... I took that same mindset. If you think about Lob City Clippers, I took the Kevin Garnett mindset to the bench of the Lob City Clippers, and we were – I was still in playoff mode because we made a long – I was – we were beating the blood out of people, dog. That's why our bench was going crazy because we was on some <laughs> dog stuff. Yeah. And then I'm taking that same mentality, Eric Bledsoe, Jamal Crawford, we all coming off the bench. We were dogging cats because I'm coming for <laughs> war. I was coming for war, and it was infectious. It was rubbing off. We were killing dudes. So you mentioned the Clippers. Shoot, now I want to know, like, all right, I got two questions here. One, give us your thoughts on that DeAndre Jordan dunk on Brandon Knight, and then also I need need some Matt Barnes material. (laughs) uh, DeAndre Jordan, 
was still learning the game at that time. Yeah, he was.